You and I are gonna make a steak sandwich today. Let's go. All right. These look great. Oh yeah, that's perfect. So we're gonna start with our smoked tomatoes because they're gonna take the longest to cook. We're gonna get all of our mise en place together, our pepper, our salt, we're gonna use some smoked Spanish paprika today, our tomatoes, bunch of thyme, and a bunch of garlic. We're gonna thinly slice this, as thin as you can get it with your knife. If you can't get it too thin, don't worry about it. It's gonna be smoked and cooked, so a little thick garlic is totally fine. All right, now that we got our garlic all sliced up, we're gonna go ahead and pick some thyme. Good, easy way to pick it is if you just get the stem, you can like pinch it somewhere near the top and just like pull it down. Pinch it, pinch it, pull down. Just like that. Super simple. And we're going to do this until we have about a tablespoon of picked thyme is what we want. Cool. So we're going to grab ourselves a medium mixing bowl. And we're going to throw our thyme right in there. Just Throw it in. And then we're going to also throw in that garlic that we sliced from earlier. And next, we're going to cut up our tomatoes. So here we're using just regular on the vine tomatoes. We're going to take them off the vine. We're going to, let's see, we're going to quarter them. So cut them in half and in half again. And we're going to just throw those right into our bowl. Let's see, put it there so you can see it. Half, half again, right into the bowl. We're gonna do them all. Now that our tomatoes are in the bowl, we're gonna just add our salt. We're gonna use a good teaspoon, two teaspoons of salt. And some fresh cracked pepper. Or like a teaspoon. Oh, you know what? I need to add some extra virgin olive oil to this too. Let's see. All right, perfect. And we're gonna add probably about one, two, three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil to that. Right here I have a little like cookie cooling rack. We're just gonna set our tomatoes right on this bad boy. Make sure they're really mixed though. You can use your hands too. All right, so we're gonna get our tomatoes and just place them on our rack. A lot of the sliced garlic and thyme is gonna still be in the bowl, but that's fine because we're just gonna go through and place those right on top of our tomatoes. Beautiful. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. All right, now these are almost ready to go in the smoker, but before we throw them in the smoker, I'm gonna put a little bit of our smoked Spanish paprika right on top, just a little, little pinch on each of them. And these will be the best tomatoes that you've ever had. All right. We're gonna open our lid, put these right onto the smoker. Oh yeah. And while these are out here cooking, my dog Lila is gonna keep an eye on them and make sure that no animals get them. Oh, Lila. Lila, are you gonna watch the tomatoes? Sit. Good girl, what a good dog, good dog. So she'll keep an eye on those and we'll come back later to get them. All right, now that our tomatoes are on the smoker, those are gonna take quite a while to cook. We're gonna make our Dijonais in the meantime. All right, so first things first, you're gonna wanna get a metal mixing bowl, get yourself a whisk, get yourself a damp kitchen towel. And I just like folding this up into like a little circle. And this is going to hold our bowl in place. 
while I'm mixing it so I can have another free hand to add all the ingredients. First things first, we're going to add two egg yolks, a half tablespoon of Dijon mustard, a tablespoon of minced garlic. We're going to start by mixing those together for about one minute. Now we're going to add our oil. Now right here I have 8 ounces of avocado oil and we're just going to drizzle that in. I put in a squeeze bottle just to make it easier and continually whisk. Now it's going to look really, really thick, but that's alright because we're going to thin it out a little bit with some lemon juice. Alright, once you have about half of your oil in, then you're going to grab a fresh lemon in your reamer, juicer or whatever, and you're, we're going to add the juice of half a lemon or a whole one depending on the size of the lemon, but we're going to use about a tablespoon of fresh lemon juice. So once that's in, give it a nice little whisk. We're going to add the rest of our oil. Now the kind of oil you use does matter. I don't really like using extra virgin olive oil for my aioli's because I feel like it makes them a little too harsh and bitter. I like using avocado oil just because it's one of the healthiest of the oils out there. Stay away from grapeseed oils, stay away from canola oil. All right. Now we got a nice thick mayonnaise right here. Okay, so now to this, we're going to add just a pinch of paprika. I'm using regular paprika, not smoked. And then a little pinch of cayenne pepper. Just a little bit, uh, probably an eighth of a teaspoon if you want to be precise, but you don't really have to be precise. That's the fun of cooking. And then we're going to add to that Let's see, one, we're going to do two tablespoons of whole grain mustard. And then to that, we're going to add a quarter of a cup of chives and two tablespoons of minced shallots. Just a couple of cracks of black pepper and about three good sized pinches of salt or a half a teaspoon. And we're just gonna give that all a nice little mix together. And this is what we should end up with. Let's give it a quick taste. All right. That's <laughs> bomb. That's good. That's gonna be so good on our sandwich. We'll set this aside in the fridge while we get the other stuff going. All right, next we're gonna get some onions cut up for some caramelized onions. We're just gonna do two yellow sweet onions and I'm gonna cut both ends, the top and the bottom. That, you can either save that if you have like a little container in your fridge for like stocks or you can just throw it away. Cut your onion directly in half. We're gonna peel the outer layer of skin as fine as we can. And I just have a vegetable knife here and I'm just going up and down, up and down. Once we get to the halfway point, I like to flip it and start again. Careful when you get to that last little bit. And we're just going to do that to both our onions. All right, now that we have our onions all cut up, we're gonna get some organic grass-fed butter. And we're gonna cut off a good little knob, about four tablespoons to be exact. Also, we're gonna use two bay leaves and a little bundle of thyme that I use some kitchen twine to wrap up. Just so I'm not picking out a bunch of thyme stems once these are done, I can just pick this whole thing out. All right, let's go over the stove and get these onions going.
All right, so in our pan, I have the flame on, and we're going to add our butter. I'll just give that a little swirl around the pan with my whole cutting board. I'm just going to put all these onions in there. Two quarts of raw cut onions, I want to say. Throw in our two bay leaves and our little bundle of thyme. So as you see, as they start to cook, they'll start to go down in size a lot. We should... When it's all said and done, only have about a cup. Now, they're going to start off really slow, but once they get going, they start to get that caramel color really quickly. So we're going to want to stir these periodically, actually quite periodically. So as they get closer and closer, you're going to want to make sure you babysit them more and more. And it's okay if some of them get a little more toasty. It's been about roughly 40 minutes, I would say, since these went on. And this is the point that I like to season my caramelized onions. Just a little pinch of salt. Just to bring out those flavors, really brighten it up. Now we're just going to transfer them onto a plate. All right, so it's been probably about four and a half to five hours that these have been out here for. And these look great. These are perfect. Now be careful, this is going to be really hot this grate. Might be a little too hot for me to even grab right now. Should have brought some tongs out, but that's okay. Perfect, and we're going to bring these bad boys inside. All right, so now we're at my favorite part. We're gonna cook the steak. So we got this nice, beautiful New York strip steak. This is about an inch and a half thick, super big. We're gonna cook it on a cast iron skillet today with just a little salt, pepper, a little bit of avocado oil to sear in the pan. And I might throw some garlic and some thyme in there and butter it to finish. So this big boy, we're just gonna be really generous with our salt. If you think you put too much salt, I can tell you, you probably didn't put enough. And we're gonna get that all, all around it on that fat cap on both sides and on the bottom. Perfect. I just washed my hands. We're gonna put some fresh cracked black pepper on our steak too. Let's get cooking. And the way I like to start cooking my New York strip steaks is I like to start with the fat cap down. That's that's this right here. That's This is called the fat cap. That thick thing of fat. So what we're going to do is start to render that out. been about eight minutes on a medium heat and you can start to see a little bit of the liquid starting to pull up on the top there that's telling me that she's ready to be flipped so I'm just gonna use a spoon and I'm just going to flip her over oh yeah look at that beautiful sear now we're going to let this cook for about five minutes on this side, and then we're going to add some butter, garlic, and thyme. We're going to start by adding five cloves of garlic to our pan. Let's throw them anywhere. And a big old bunch of thyme. I like putting that in the very back of my pan. Two to three tablespoons of butter to our pan. Spoon it right on top of our steak. And then I put that butter right on top too. Now we're going to let this rest for about five minutes before we cut into it. We're going to add a little bit more oil. And we're going to toast our bread right in the same pan we just cooked our steak in. Put a little more oil on top of the bread on the other side before we flip it.
put a little pinch of salt and a few cracks of black pepper. Now I'm cutting this on a bias. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Cool, so now we have all of our stuff ready. We're gonna put together our sandwich. So we're gonna start off with our toasted sourdough bread, our Dijonese that we made earlier. We're going to put this on both, both sides of the bread. Being really generous. Going coast to coast. And that just means spread, spread from one side to the other. Let's put a little bit more. Oh yeah. Cool. So next to that, we're going to put on our top piece of bread, we're going to put our caramelized onions from earlier. And we're going to put a nice, generous mound all over the top. And then our smoked tomatoes next beautiful i'm just gonna wipe my hands real quick next we got some butter lettuce right here that we're gonna put right on top Beautiful. And the piece de resistance. Our steak. And we're just going to layer that right on our sandwich. Now before we seal it, we're going to just put a little bit of salt on our steak. And she is ready. We're going to put our top on. All right, and we're going to cut into this on a slight bias. Oh, yeah. So without further ado, let's go. Mmm. Mmm. That is so good. Oh my gosh. We just need to take another bite real quick. Mmm. It doesn't get any better than that. Thanks for joining me. Leave a message in the comment section down below. Like, subscribe, do all the fun stuff. And I'll see you next time. Let's go.